We have seen in the previous lecture that if there is a non-orthogonal coordinate system and then there are vectors OP1 and OP2 acting, the vector here in this case is stress O towards P1 and O towards P2, P1 and P2 has the coordinate x1, y1 and x2, y2. Then in the orthogonal coordinate system, the resultant OPR will have the PR coordinate given by XR is equal to this much and YR is equal to this much. From here, now I will come to the lecture material. Consider once again that there is a point P1 and say OP1 is a stress. Then we can tell that this, this length, OX length is equal to the X1 length and the OY length is equal to the Y1 length. In other words, this stress can be resolved along the two non-orthogonal coordinate axis. Now how the addition of stress works? Suppose a st stress addition is made that is OP1 plus OP2 and is given by OPR the arrow goes from O to PR direction and the PR coordinate will be X1 plus X2 added up and then Y1 plus Y2 added up. Now with this you can compare in this side and if this is converted now into an orthogonal coordinate system, this would be the conversion. So what we see overall is that for theta is equal to 90 degree, that is a special case, the non-orthogonal coordinate system becomes an orthogonal coordinate system. And in that case, the way we are adding the stresses, the way we are adding the vectors remains the same. So this was all about a two-dimensional plane where OX and OY were the two axis which are not at 90 degree, what will happen if we think of a non-orthogonal coordinate system in three dimension. That means they are making an angle and there is a third axis like this which makes not 90 degree with OX and not 90 degree with the OY line. Say so this is the OZ and then suppose in the space P1 is a point here. How we go for this stress addition? remains open problem for you. You can think about it and you can write back to me without looking at the solution given in the books. Sometimes it is important to do easy things by your own instead of looking into the books for the solution. And I will expect that such things were done in class 12 standard or in the BSc level in the mathematics pass course possibly. So as a geology student, if you are in an MSc course, try to do it by yourself that will be a very good self-learning process. What we have done so far with the two-dimensional OX and OY coordinate axis when they are orthogonal or not orthogonal can be looked in this way as well. From P1 to P2 is a stress acting. So we can take of course as a vector and the P1 coordinate is X1, Y1, the P2 coordinate is X2, Y2. Now the question is suppose this stress acts on point O also. Then what is the coordinate of P5? In other words, I draw a line parallel to P1, P2 and equal to P1, P2 length passing through O. Then what is the coordinate of the P5? This is important to understand. The P1, P2 length will be given by this standard form and the angle between P1, P2 line and the OX axis will be given by tan inverse y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. Now OP5 is P1, P2 passing through O or in other words OP5 is drawn parallel to P1, P2 and length same as P1, P2 passing through O. Then P5 has coordinate x5, y5. This point P5 has x5, y5 coordinate. Then the OP5 length will be square root of y5 square plus x5 square and that has to be equal to p1 p2 and p1 p2 is this length. So we can say that this expression is equal to that expression and tan inverse y5 divided by x5 will give the slope of this line with the ox axis this angle tan inverse y5 by x5 and that will be equal to tan inverse this expression because these are parallel lines. So if these two tan inverse expressions are same, tan inverse can be removed, we can write 
y5 by x5 is equal to y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. So we have got basically two equations, 1 and 2, where what are the known things? y1, y2, x1, x2 coordinates. And what are unknown things? x5 and y5 are the unknown coordinates. So from two equations and two unknowns, we can solve x5 and y5 coordinate. And similarly, the problem can be solved for three-dimensional cases and for non-orthogonal axis in two dimension and in three dimensions. I would request the student to try this by their own. You might have done coordinate geometry earlier, but it is it will be good. You only look at the formulae and try to deduce by your own these two things. So we have seen just now that if P1, P2 is the given stress not passing through point O, but the instructor is saying such a stress is acting passing through point O, how the stress will be represented. We said OP5 is the stress representation done. The P5 coordinate is obtained and the OP5 length is understood. Imagine now just like P1, P2 stress that is also P3, P4 from P3 to P4 there is a stress acting and we want to now find out the resultant stress. So what to do? As we have found the P5 coordinate x5, y5 similarly for P3, P4 we can think of the point P7 so that OP7 is basically parallel to P3, P4 and the OP7 length is equal to P3, P4. In this way, the P7 coordinate X7, Y7 can also be obtained. And once that has been obtained, the resultant vector which I can write as sigma OR or OPR will have the R ordinate X5 plus X7 and Y5 plus Y7 because of the previous lecture that I have given and the magnitude of this stress. OP7 will be square root of x5 plus x7 whole square plus y5 plus y7 whole square. Now once this is done, now think about the n number of such stresses acting. Not, not any of them are given passing through the origin, but now with the additional instruction, suppose these stresses are also acting on this origin point, then what how the resultant will be represented. The OR resultant, some resultant OR can be represented and this coordinate R can be obtained in a similar way. Now what I have told for the orthogonal coordinate axis, I will request the viewer to extend the idea for the polar coordinate axis and also for the non-orthogonal coordinate system. It will be obvious but it is good that we are training ourselves so that in subsequent lectures things will become easier. Study of stress sometimes involves different coordinate systems, the orthogonal coordinate system in 2D and 3D, the polar coordinate system in 2D, sometimes the non-orthogonal coordinate system. We are going to see the polar coordinate in three dimension, what is also called as the spherical coordinate. A is a point and O is the origin. In the polar coordinate in 3D or in the spherical coordinate, we express the position of point A by three numbers r, theta and phi. r is the OA distance. Consider from A we drop a normal on the xy plane that intersects the xy plane at A dash. After projecting A dash we join O and A dash by a line. So effectively OA's projection on the xy plane is O A dash. And in that case this angle is 90 degree. Although it is not well understood in this two dimensional sketch that this angle is 90, it does not look like so. Now the angle between OA dash which is a horizontal projection, in this case XY is a horizontal plane, OA dash which is a projection of OA, that OA dash makes a theta angle anticlockwise from the X axis. Now when we have considered the polar coordinate in two dimension, there also we considered such a thing. This is a familiar two dimensional diagram where for this point P we have found O to P distance called it as R and from x axis in an anticlockwise direction the theta angle was considered. This is the theta angle. R is done, theta is done. What about phi? Phi is the angle between the z axis and the OA line. So in this way by specifying R, theta and phi the coordinate of A in space can be specified. Now we know that in an orthogonal coordinate system we can represent A also by X, Y and Z as the three numbers. 
the question here is what is the conversion relation from r theta phi to x y z and from x y z to r theta phi. So we can easily say this r distance equal to square root of x square plus y square plus z square. So if x y z coordinates are given and I want to convert it into a polar coordinate in 3D or the spherical coordinate then I can convert using this formula we get the r value. What about theta and phi? Now in three dimension we can understand this z axis is a vertical line in this case and this line a a dash is also a vertical line and this these two vertical lines are intersected by this orange line making an angle phi so which say which means this angle also is phi. Now this is a right angle triangle where this is 90 degree this is phi and this is this angle is 90 degree minus phi. So we can write within this right angle triangle z divided by r this distance is z z divided by r OA distance is equal to cos of this angle. So from here we can also write sin phi is equal to square root of 1 minus z square divided by r square. So we can write this as square root of x square plus y square divided by x square plus y square plus z square or if we wish we can write this as square root of x square plus y square divided by this total one is basically r. So as r we can use this one or that one in future. Now again look at this right angle triangle this O A dash distance can be represented as r multiplied by sin phi because this angle is 90 degree and that angle is phi. Now I come to the OXY plane. This OXY plane and the OA dash line can be drawn in a more familiar way OX and OY, OA dash and this is the theta. So we can understand if this is the x ordinate this is small x this will be equal to OA dash cos theta and we can write y small y coordinate is equal to o a dash sin theta and that's what i write x equal to o a dash cos theta and y equal to o a dash sin theta now this o a dash we already have found out from this right angle triangle and we just replace o a dash by r sin phi so i write here x is equal to r sin phi cos theta and here I write y is equal to r sin phi sin theta. Once this is done from this equation what can we write x is equal to r multiplied by sin phi. Now we are going to replace this sin phi. We have already obtained the sin phi over here either you take this expression or that expression and substitute here. And from there you write theta is equal to cos inverse x divide by square root of x square plus y square. So here we have expressed theta in terms of x and y. Note that there is no z term involved. So what do we get? r theta phi will be now represented as r. We already stated this relation. So that is what is written here comma and then theta. Theta is equal to cos inverse this term as has been found right now and phi we already found phi from here cos inverse z by r or we can write phi is equal to sin inverse this term. So here we write cos inverse z divided by r. So what has happened? If the x, y, z values are known I can convert it into r theta phi coordinate the spherical coordinate. So if I have a coordinate 5 comma 7 comma minus 13 I can put these values over there and I can come to r theta phi. And conversely x, y and z just now deduced x is equal to r sin phi cos theta, y is equal to r sin phi sin theta and z is equal to r cos phi. So if the phi value is 32 degree theta is 71 and r equal to 7 I mean the polar coordinate in 3D is given then we can convert it into the Cartesian coordinate x, y and z. Note that we expect x square plus y square plus z square to be equal to r square and that is true if I square it 
square that one and square that one and add up it comes out as r square. So, the deduction what has been made is correct. I am not giving problems involving stress, but students need to know this much and in certain problems on stress this knowledge will be useful. If we link this problem with the stress and we say that here is a point A and this is point O there is a stress acts like that and it has a value of R1, theta1 and phi1 and there is another point B with a coordinate R1 sorry R2, theta2 and phi2 then what is the resultant of this OA and OB? Can you derive a formula? Alternately one can convert R1, theta1, phi1 and R2, theta2, phi2 into the Cartesian coordinates and from there do the vector addition and present that as the result. So, if I need the Cartesian coordinate result we need to convert and I leave to students OA and OB the spherical coordinates are given find out the resultant. Now, let us look at another coordinate system the cylindrical coordinate system it is used in stress related studies here we will do only the introductory things. Consider in two dimension the polar coordinate which has already been discussed r theta is the point r theta is the angle of this or line measured in anti clockwise from the ox axis r is the length of or now after finding the r point r theta on the two dimension move this point perpendicular to this green board and reach somewhere to the z distance and if we do that essentially we are thinking of a cylindrical coordinate which will have the coordinate r, theta and z. So, here we see that there are two length units r and z, theta is the angle and if I compare with the spherical coordinate as I have demonstrated it is r theta phi. So, therefore, there is only single length unit r and there are two angles involved theta and phi. Now, once r theta z is explained to you I am asking you to find out a conversion formula that the cylindrical coordinate r theta z has to be converted into the Cartesian coordinate x y z. It is clear that the z value will not change the r theta will be converted to corresponding x and y value which I have already explained while talking in two dimension the polar coordinate. Now, think that suppose there are stresses given as a position vectors in cylindrical coordinates that means for a sigma 1 stress suppose the position vector is r 1 theta 1 z 1 and for the stress sigma 2 the position vector is r 2 theta 2 and z 2 then find out the resultant I am requesting the students to do by themselves. Once you convert from the cylindrical coordinate to the Cartesian coordinate also do the vice versa that means from the Cartesian coordinate say x y z the point how will you find out the cylindrical coordinate r theta and z. Now, there are also other coordinate systems two other readily I can remember used in these stress related studies I am leaving up to students do your self study find out what are they and try to convert the Cartesian coordinate x y z into those coordinates and vice versa.